Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at integrating the position vector. Now physically it may not have any meaning, but it's a good example of how to integrate vectors in the first place written in this kind of format. This could have been the velocity vector or the acceleration vector. So let's just integrate the position vector defined by the vector 2t in the i direction plus 3t squared in the j direction and let this represent the integral of that position vector. So how do we write that? Well that would be equal to the integral of 2t in the i direction plus 3t squared in the j direction and times D, oh, not dr, because that's not our variable. It needs to be the parametric variable t, so times dt. And notice uh, that these are not definite integrals, they're indefinite integrals. Now we're going to separate those two into two separate integrals, so this can be written as the integral of 2t in the i direction, dt, plus the integral of 3t squared in the j direction, times dt. Now, we don't really have to do that, but it'll clarify something, so stay with me. Now, let's integrate this, so this becomes equal to 2t squared divided by 2 in the i direction, plus a constant of integration, let's call it c1, plus this becomes 3t cubed over 3 in the j direction, plus another constant of integration. So here you can see there's two different constant of integrations and there's actually a reason why we did that. Now let's simplify it and we'll look at the reason. So this becomes t squared in the i direction uh, plus c1 plus t cubed in the j direction plus c2. Now what does c1 and c2 represent? Well c1 and c2 take on value when t is equal to zero. So that'll be the position, or, well, not really position because we integrate the position vector, but it'll be the value of the vector r when t is equal to zero. So when, so what we're going to do here is we're going to evaluate the integral, which is when t is equal to zero, so this is going to be equal to zero in the i direction plus c1 plus zero in the j direction plus c2. So in other words, c1 and c2 are actually the value in the i direction for c1 and the value in the j direction for c2. So in other words, this can now be written as r times t equal to 0 is basically equal to 0 in the i direction plus some value, let's call it c3 in the i direction, plus here we can say 0 in the j direction plus c4 in the j direction. In other words, it'll be some component in the i direction plus some component in the j direction. That would be the correct way of writing it. So ultimately, then, if we then account for these as being some position in the x direction and some position, here we go, and some position in the y direction, then ultimately we can write this as the following. So this then becomes equal to t squared in the i direction plus t cubed in the j direction plus some other vector c where c is then equal to c3 in the i direction plus c4 in the j direction. So simply the, when we do an integral of a position vector we're going to get a constant of integration and that constant of integration actually will represent another vector in the i and in the j direction. So with a component in the i direction and a component in the j direction. And so that's how we integrate position vectors or any vector for that matter. That's how it's done.